ask you to play Flip the Book. Okay, so, sounds good. So we've got three books, so one, two or three. Which book would you like? And by the way, Steve, can't see them. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'll say three. That's what intuitively three. comes up. Okay, so we're in your insight and awareness now. That's the biggest book. So you've got the ability to pick from one to 430 pages. Let's say 151. 151. I'm going to have to stand up, so hang on a minute. Okay. This is a picture. I'll just... That's strange. I had a feeling it was going to be a picture. <laughs> it's a complex picture, so I'll explain it to you, Steve. Even though Steve's just had a quick look at it, is so we've got the collective energy with Earth in the middle and it's got a vortex around it. And then we've got a person who's above it and they've got their own personal vortex around it. And in the vortexes we've got things like the collective of insecurity, um, indifference, resentment, regret, jealousy, to name a few. And then it's got an arrow pointing to the collective energy of regret, um, insecurity, manipulation, resentment. And then there's a person with a like a beam of light through them, which is connected to where, wherever we come from. So where, whatever you want to class that as, we'll just say source. So the picture d- depicts the individual within the collective and that your emotional energy is contributing to the collective emotional energy and that your soul can be an anchor point within that collective if you operate from there. So the the caption for that picture is when we die, sorry, when you die, your soul's consciousness returns to our origins and your unresolved emotions disperse into the correlating energetic collectives of the mass energy of mankind. So the the concept behind what's written here is that when you resolve your emotional issues, you are taking that energy out of the collective, which allows more conscious energy to be within mankind's collective. If you don't resolve your unresolved emotions, they go into the collective energy and what's not written there, it's on the next page, is that when you're reborn, that energy comes back to you because it is your creation, which is sort of the ex- explanation of karma. What's I your love view? that. Yeah. Yeah, so what, that seems, seems beautifully synchronous with, with what we've been talking about thus far. Um, so far, Flip the Book has been doing that. We love it. <laughs> I love it. Yep. I love how their book and the page number just popped into my, my mind. I just, you know, went blank and saw it. Yeah. Uh, your Insight and Awareness book is written for that purpose and you just use each paragraph or sentence as a jump point to be self-reflective and then you know there's big concepts in there that you can pull apart and explore that's a big concept for people to to understand is there anything you'd like to add to that concept yeah uh, I often think of of life as all these different energy signatures that we can connect with and that we have relationships with so we can resist an energy field we can participate in it we can be aloof with it we can uh dive you know dive right into it and immerse ourselves in it so we have so many different options for relating to these energy fields and they affect us so we're affected by the collective soup that we're in but we also have the ability to do something like world building which is sort of a focus i've been embracing lately which is asking yourself okay what kind if i was to build my own mini world within this universe that we're in what kind of energies would i want to invite into it what kind would i leave out and then you can create your own your own space your own sort of individual energy field and invite people into it so it becomes a social field then and like a uh, microcosm in a macrocosm like you a, a it, small world within a larger world Exactly. And, pe- you know, people do that all the time, say, yeah. uh, like George Lucas creating the Star Wars universe. So you, you have that becoming something, you know, very popular. But th- then, you know, within that universe, uh, you know, George Lucas is he's the originator and the creator. And he does take, you know, he takes ideas from other sources, but he basically gloms them together and creates his mini universe. And even though it's a fictional universe, your, your universe can be fictional. It can be, um, you know, non-fictional. It doesn't really matter, but you basically create this world in which certain rules apply, characters behave certain ways, 
and you can inv invite people into that experience. And there's so many media for exploring that. You can write a series of books. You can, um, you can create a coaching club or community. You can do public speaking. You can start a podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but if you think of your podcast, you know, what you're doing is you're creating a world you're, and you're inviting people into it. You're saying, here's the energies I want to explore with you collectively. And what yeah. that does is it creates, it creates a community around your podcast of people who, when they engage with it or around it, they, they want to have more resonance with certain kinds of energy patterns. And that's what you explore together. You know, so yeah. it's the energy around conscious spirituality. And, and so you, you will find that other people add their, their versions of the energies, you know, to it, they enhance it, they, they expand upon it, like people might create fan fiction for the Star Wars universe, or how George Lucas sold Star Wars to Disney, and then they take it and run with it and create more series and, and build upon it, uh, and more movies as well. So it, it, it doesn't have to stop with the creator, you can get some kind of world of energy going, and watch it grow and watch it expand. Um, almost like giving birth to a child and watching yeah. it, you know, raising it, having it go out into the world. So that's, that's an interesting way to think about doing any kind of uh, work in the world is that you're, you're creating a world. Now you can say, join a corporation and be part of somebody else's world, but whether you have a job, whether you start a business, do something independent, you still have the ability to sculpt a mini world around you by how you engage with life and the energies that you bring to it. So that, that I think is, um, you know, maybe another layer I would add to that, to that image yeah. of, of uh, consciously choosing to build many worlds and release them into the world. Like my collective work, I think of it as like a world that is released into the larger world. And then your mini world interacts with the larger world and it can, you know, it can grow, it can shrink, it can do all kinds of things, but it, it basically creates a space for people to come and explore and engage with a collection of energies um, that I think enhances the growth experiences of life. So, you know, other people in the world are doing this in other ways too. Excellent, have, yeah. We have a war going on in Europe. That's like creating a world where there's conflict. And then, you know, people uh, are engaged in the conflict there. So that's, you know, it, we can see the, the world of fear, regret, resentment, and so on. We can see all those worlds and we can actually consciously decide if I were to create a mini world within this larger world, what would I choose to put in it? And what would I choose to leave out? Yeah. And I definitely put in being an explorer and trusting your curiosity and, and lean into the unknown and, and see what's there. So I want to thank you for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure. And Thanks um, so much. I yeah, appreciate it. I, I really appreciate you doing what you're doing. Thanks, Lorraine. I hope your listeners enjoy it.